So I promised a video because I have a couple that I need to assemble from pretty much from inside the box, although I've thrown the box away. These new Hyper Tough mowers. Um, these cheap mowers don't come assembled with the wheels and stuff on them. They do. They look exactly like this when you get them out of the box. So the handle, you know, the handle bolts and stuff are in it, and the handles folded down with that piece of cardboard on it. So just uh, first step, obviously, is to take it out of the box. That's what I've done. Um, you've got your four wheels here, and you have your discharge chute, and you have your hardware. As you can hear, I'm still uh, running some out of gas over there, so don't mind that. Um, all your hardware should be in there. I think this was missing just a couple of things, but that's kind of the luck of the draw um, when it comes to these mowers. Um, but still enough in there for me to show y'all what we need to do. Um, blade already comes on it in the bottom, so you don't have to worry about putting the blade on. You can look at tightening the blade. Um, I think these have 9 16 inch nut on them or bolt excuse me and they don't come with oil that's one thing i don't have in this bag is oil so they'll come with oil in them uh and it's the exact amount that you need to put in the mower so you just dump the whole 20 ounce 18 ounce 20 ounce something like that um jug into it to uh to get it going um but the first step is to put the wheels on and so let's see if I can get the correct hardware out to put the wheels on. I checked the other mower because I wanted to make sure that I did it right before I went on video to do this. You have your, you have three things here. Unfortunately, I've only got, I don't have all four of the um, bolts. I've only got three of them. But what it is is you've got your bolt. You've got your little separation washer here and you got your nut. So what's gonna happen is, and I'll put the camera down and I'll explain it. You have four holes. So if you want it really low, put it at the top hole. If you want it really high, you put it in the bottom hole. Me, I'm gonna put it in the whole third hole right here. Make sure you put it in the same hole all around to get an even cut. Um, it's not really science. <laughs> Just, uh, just line up the holes on each side. They're going to give you the same height all around and give you the good cut. Um, you have, I have the washer here too. Helps keep everything tight and keeps the, most importantly, keeps the wheel away from the deck. So it's pretty important that you have these. Like I said, I only got two in the bag, but yours, if you buy a new one, should come with four. And I will, and I've got two of these somewhere lying around. I'll put on this, so no big deal. But let me put this down and get it framed up here. So I've got it on a jack stand just to make it a little bit easier. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the wheel through or the bolt through the wheel. Put the washer on the wheel and just slide it into hole number three, second from the bottom is where I'm going to put it. Screw it on. And it's kind of a locking nut so I'm going to get a And get a uh, let me see what it takes I believe it's the three quarters on the outside that's the three quarters yes three quarters on the outside I'm pretty sure it's a nine sixteenths on the inside let me, let me check to make sure yep so you have a three quarters on the outside a nine sixteenths on the inside and we're gonna tighten this. I don't have a 9 16 inch wrench out right now, so I will grab that wrench and tighten this wheel up. And I'm sure y'all know how to tighten up wheels righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So, but that's how, that's how the wheels go on. That's the order of uh, everything that goes on. Once I get all four of them on, I'll show y'all what it looks like. 
and uh, then we'll get the discharge sheet on. So this is pretty simple stuff. Um, so yeah, let me get the wheels on and then we'll get the discharge sheet on. Well, I had to improvise a little bit to get everything to work because um, sometimes with these things, when I, when I get them, uh, they don't come with all the hardware. So I had two of these washer things to split the deck from the wheel so that the, the wheel wasn't rubbing. I had three bolts and so I needed to find two washer type deals and one bolt and I was able to find this that works great with bolt number three and pardon the air compressor but uh bolt number four wasn't long enough to put a splitter like a washer like that on it so i found um i paired like three washers together to split it from the deck and uh thankfully it's uh split from the deck so uh it works well um, I tighten, tighten them down. You want to tighten these down really well um, so that they don't come loose on you. Um, so I'm going to wheel it around a little bit just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, But the next thing is putting this on. Um, it's going to go on top like that, as you can see. Um, it's going to be two seven sixteenths inch bolts. So, I've got a spare washer in here. I don't know what it's for, but I've only got I've got a washer and an extra nut in here. I don't know what it's for. But what you're going to have, maybe I don't. Anyways. I can get them out of the bag here. I don't have an extra nut. I'm just nuts is what it is. Um, I'm going to have these washers here. I don't know why there's one big washer and one small washer, but there should only be two small washers there. I'll put the big washer on just, or I'll find another small washer. I'll keep the big washer for something else. But you're gonna have two small washers like that one that you see there, two nuts and two bolts. What you're gonna do, I'll lay the camera down here. They're 7 16 inch, and I'll show you how you mount them, uh, or at least the way that I have them. So I have just been putting this cover on top, and you got the bolts there. Take, uh, I've been taking the bolt, running it up through the deck, putting the putting this on cover and then I've been putting the washer on kind of got to hold it down here on the bottom as you do this but as long as you get the first one you can get the second one and put the washer on top and I'm sure I'm sure putting the washer on the bottom will serve the same purpose but I just do it just so that it it doesn't put as much pressure on the plastic cover. But 7 16 inch on the top, 7 16 on the bottom. And you do that for the second one here too. Like I said, I'm going to get a bigger or a smaller washer that should come in the box. I've just got a little mismatch of, of stuff since this is a perfect new out of the box deal. Um, that's a customer return. But you'll put the second one in just like I just put the first one in. You're going to get two 7 16 inch wrenches or 7 16 inch somethings to tighten these down and it doesn't move it's a fixed chute so um, that's how you put that on um, next well I'll go ahead and show you all the next step but uh, next step is pretty much just you have your safety bar here which is already going to be hooked up if not it's two small holes and I'll show you how to hook it up since I just undid it. But you have two small holes. This cable fits into. There's a hole there. Usually it's easier to put that side in first. 
and then put the side that doesn't have the cable in next and there you go you pull it back and forth and your safety cable moves down there and in order to get the safety cable or the pull rope to move freely you have to pull this pull the safety bar back and then pull the rope out Just pull the rope out I typically do that slowly to start because I want to get it inside this uh, mechanism here and it's a little eyelet and so we're just gonna and it goes on the top side I've seen a bunch of people put them on the bottom side and that's not the correct way just because just loosen that up a little bit more you don't have to take it completely off to get it in and I'm and I'm also doing this with one hand so uh, doesn't help but you're going to get it in the eyelet just like so then you're going to tighten it up again the eyelet portion goes on the top if it goes on the bottom it's going to rub against the handle you're going to wear out your rope too quickly if you do that so put it like that um, your oil is right here this is where your oil goes. Might be a little tight to start. You might have to get a pair of pliers, which is what I'm going to have to do with this one. But if you get your pair of pliers, or if you just have more strength than I do, take, take this off. It should not have oil in it yet. And then you're going to have your, like I mentioned, your 20 ounce ounces of oil that should have already been provided say in dry it's just got maybe like one fluid ounce in there just to kind of lube up the cylinder on first startup but you'll put 20 ounces of oil in anywhere between 16 and 20 just you know feel it out and check it um, if you go a little over I've noticed these overhead valve engines aren't that particular. Um, I just make sure that it is full or very close to full. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and put oil in it and put gas in it. Um, I hope this has been helpful to kind of show you all how this stuff comes assembled. And I think I did it off camera, but in order to get this uh, handle up, all you got to do is pull it. Pull it up because it's not uh, attached to the rope or anything like that. So, you know, it's folded down. This is folded in the front, and this is folded back. All you gotta do is pull it up, because it's got these um, grooves right here. So, that's pretty easy to do. Um, I'll go ahead and dress everything up, and we'll uh, give it a start. And uh, hopefully, um, we'll have a good, uh, good runner here for y'all. I know this video has gotten kind of lengthy already, but just a quick aside before I uh, crank it up. Um, I did put oil in it now. Um, we are we are full. We're in great shape. Maybe just a tad over full, but these Briggs motors don't really mind that any. Um, they'll burn it right off. Uh, what oil do I use when I don't have, you know, the little 20 ounce SAE 30? Usually I use 10W30. Walmart didn't have it when I went last time. I just use the SuperTech conventional because it's the cheapest oil that I can buy. That is the reason. Um, and it works works just great. Never had any problems with, uh, with using that oil. I've got 10W40 right now. It works just fine. I've used diesel oil when I could get it um, for free. Um you know 15w40 so as long as it's got oil in it i wouldn't i'd say i'd stay away from 5w20 or thin oil um 5w30 you'd probably be all right you just want something to uh to lube it up pretty good for longevity um obviously hd30 or um regular 30 weight is the best but 10w30 10w40 and 15W40 will work just fine um, for uh, 
for what you need no more. Um, so some people are really picky, and it just it's just personal preference. Um, some people like running straight, and you know, just whatever in it. Um, I've heard good and bad things about synthetic. I'm sure you couldn't go wrong with it either. Um, if anybody wants to chime in on what they use and what they recommend using, feel free to. But for me, I've never had any problems from my experience with pretty much any oil using it in a lawnmower. Like I said, 30 weight's the best, but never had a problem using 1030, 1040, or 1540 in uh, in mowers. So uh, that's that's the quick aside, and uh, I'll get it down in the test bed, put gas in it, and we'll crank it up. So I got it down here in the test bed. This is always my final step whenever I get these things ready. Um, and it doesn't hurt to... Uh, to break them in but I just try and break these things in um, especially if they've never run before like this one um, I put about a quarter of a tank of gas in it and just let it run out and these are pretty efficient with them being overhead valve it usually takes a good 15 minutes for them to uh, to uh, run out of gas so um, that's kind of the final, my final step in the process and um, it's worked um, so far um, I've sold somewhere in the neighborhood of 65 of these now um, that I've gotten customer returns um, on the pallets and I've only had two come back one of them was a, a carburetor issue um, where the carburetor just wasn't right um, on a brand new mower believe it or not so um, got that back fixed it for the guy and uh, everything seemed good and the other one I just think the guy simply ran it out of gas and uh, either didn't like it and wanted to return it um, so he um, he brought it back uh, I put gas in it and ran it for another 15 or 20 minutes and sold it um, a week later for, um, well, for ten dollars less but it happens right um, so I've always had very good luck with this process um, and we'll crank it up and let it run for y'all. Stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching.